Welcome to Diaspora TV Switzerland, the digital edition, wherever you're watching, across all the 26 cantons and beyond. It's a great pleasure to have you with us. I'm your host, Maria Heiser, and this are the news-making headlines. A historic verdict could force Swiss revolt on family tax breaks. Reformed gun laws, corporate tax reforms linked to the old pension scheme make the second round of this year's votation. Each eligible household to be refunded 50 Swiss francs VAT from the radio and TV fees paid between 2010 and 2015. The Swiss government goes tough on individuals, institutions or cantons that breach the asylum process and rules. World Humanitarian Innovation Day kicks off in Basel, Switzerland. The Action Week Against Racism is gaining ground in Switzerland. One Love, Peace and Unity Party took place in Biel. Embassies and students come together in Bern to promote food and cultural heritage of different countries. For the first time in the history of Swiss direct democracy, the Supreme Court has ordered a revolt of a tax break initiative for married couples that was rejected in 2016. Voters may have to go back to the polls at the national level to decide for a second time on the same people's initiative. This second vote follows after the government published erroneous figures in its official booklet for the 2016 initiative for proposed tax breaks for married couples. The government has since retracted its earlier report that 80,000 married and registered couples are said to benefit from reduced taxes and confirmed that the numbers are actually 454,000. The initiative, promoted by the centrist Christian Democratic Party, appeared to spark no major controversies in the run-up to the vote in March 2016, and voters threw it out with a Wafati majority of 50.8%. Some Christian Democrats now say it is outdated to define marriage as between a man and a woman. Diaspora TV conducted a public opinion poll and collected divergent views on the definition of marriage and its meaning for them. Take a look. Le mariage est apparemment un engagement entre deux êtres qui s'aiment. Maintenant, moi, porter un jugement sur le sexe, si ça doit être un homme ou une femme, ou deux hommes ou deux femmes, ben qu'importe, pour moi, c'est ce que les deux êtres s'engagent à vivre ensemble. Alors, je préfère le mariage entre femme et, et l'homme. Et puis, je suis contre les mariages entre hommes et entre femmes seulement. Alors pour moi le mariage c'est entre un homme et une femme. Je respecte totalement les personnes qui se marient entre elles, c'est-à-dire homme et homme ou femme et femme. Mais si je regarde par exemple l'exemple de la Bible, dans la Bible Adam s'est marié avec Ève, il ne s'est pas marié avec Adam et Adam. Donc pour moi vraiment c'est homme et femme. Also, heiraten bedeutet für mich ähm, verbunden sein mit einem Menschen. Egal, auf welchem Zusammengehörigkeit. Mann oder Frau oder Mann und Mann und Frau und Frau. Einfach verbunden sein. Two major issues will dominate the upcoming national votation on May 19, 2019. This includes financing of the pension system through corporate tax reforms and the reform of gun laws to align with the European Union gun law reform. Two years after a major corporate tax overhaul and the reform gun laws were rejected by Swiss voters, the issues are back before the electorate on May 19th. This time, the government has linked corporate tax reforms to another sensitive dossier, the financing of the state old age pension system. The major linkage between the two issues is that for each franc that the Swiss state or cantons lose to the reform of corporate tax, a concessionary franc will be paid to them in the form of basic state old age and survivors insurance scheme. As for the new proposals, the basic goal remains the same, to remove the privileges granted to certain, usually foreign firms, and apply a level playing field for all companies. The government foresees the injection of 2 billion Swiss francs into the old age pension scheme over the next few years as an outcome of the reform. Minister of Interior Alain Berset and the President of Switzerland and Minister of Finance Ueli Maurer one that rejecting the two-headed package in May 19th would lead to legal uncertainty and taxation pressure from the international community, which could harm the Swiss economy. 
On the second issue, the EU decided to tighten firearms regulations in the wake of the 2015 terrorist attacks in the French capital Paris, where gunmen killed more than 100 people. As a member of a single border Schengen area, but not the EU, Switzerland must adapt its laws in line with the EU regulations. Ultimately, Switzerland's government says it convinced the European Union Commission to drop the demand that the private individuals be categorically banned from owning automatic and semi-automatic guns. The government insists that the impact of the legal reform is minimal for sportsmen taking part in competitions, a tradition still widespread in Switzerland. If the new law passes, they will have to register with a rifle club as a precondition for owning a firearm. According to the government, hunters are not affected by the legal amendment because they do not use semi-automatic rifles. Now offer some good news. The Federal Council proposes a radio television fee refund of 50 Swiss francs per eligible household. The Federal Supreme Court had stated in two executive judgments that no VAT may be levied on the reception fees and that the federal government must repay the taxes levy between 2010 and 2015. The credit shall be made on an invoice issued by the fee collection agency, Serafe. Switzerland's central government cut some federal subsidies to four French-speaking cantons over the failure to send asylum seekers back to other European countries under the EU's Dublin Accord. Justice and Police Minister Karin Keller-Suter told Parliament that the federal government had cancelled six million Swiss francs in federal subsidies to cantons for failing to deport this category of immigrants. The bulk of the penalties are on Canton Vaud, which Keller Suter said was losing four million Swiss francs because of 204 cases. The other affected cantons are Neuchâtel, Geneva and Valais. Providing accommodation, food or money to an undocumented person is illegal in Switzerland. Hundreds of people are convicted every year for violating migration laws. Religious communities, associations and politicians demand an adaptation of the law to exclude solidarity offences. The law provides that anyone who facilitates or prepares the unlawful entry or exit or illegal stay in Switzerland at home and abroad will be punished with imprisonment of up to one year or a fine. Now, on a lighter note, have you been wondering how business, innovation and humanity work can coexist under the same roof? Innovate for Right is hosting in Basel the World Humanitarian Innovation Day coming up on May 10th, 2019 at the Basel Segerten Conference Center. They still have some spaces for you to exhibit your business and network with other key players in the business world. Take a look at this video. A global conference in Basel will focus on business and humanitarian innovation for return on investments and positive impact. Innovate for Right will hold the World Humanitarian Innovation Day on May the 10th, 2019, to raise attention on the benefits to support humanitarian innovation. The event will gather humanitarian actors including social entrepreneurs, financial institutions, impact investors and philanthropists. The programme includes three parallel sessions, keynote speeches with well-known visionary speakers, 40 project pitches, masterclasses with high-rank university professors and panel discussions. In addition, an exhibition by the project leaders and sponsors will take place during the conference. Opportunities include investment, collaboration and building your sustainable network. The event is calling for anyone looking to contribute to have a double positive impact on your local and global brand exposure. We believe as part of the corporate social responsibility and philanthropy policy of your institution or your personal philanthropy activities, they'll serve as a unique opportunity to give back to the community. So if you would like to get involved and become a sponsor, reach out to the Innovate for Right team and use the code BLTV2019 for 10% off your ticket prices and see you there. As part of the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, which is 21st of March every year, Switzerland since several years has been taking part in the event. This year, 2019, was marked with several events like concerts, workshops and TV talk shows. Diaspora TV visited some of the events and also conducted street interviews in regards to racism. So racism for me is expecting the worst from the person simply because of the colour. At least we have to accept one another over this racism thing and uh, it have to do something we only see it as colors, but well, it's not colors, we are all human beings. 
No. no. Two. Two. Racism. We don't like racism, we don't support it, that's why we are here. I don't know where this feeling is coming from. I don't know what to do. Quite interesting, quite interesting. I'm very, very much impressed. Behind me you can see what is happening. All cultures. United against racism. Come on! Love. On entertainment news, over 500 people, mostly youths, attended the Banfire One Love, Peace and Unity party that took place at the Coppel event hall in Beel on Friday, 12th of April, with DJ Master from Belgium, DJ Pieces, DJ Nerds, and Nappy Paco on the decks. The event was organized by Jan Bam Promotion. I enjoy myself today, okay? It's the best party ever I've ever been in this life, okay? The Global Village Food Festival was an event to promote and showcase food and cultural heritage of different countries. This year's event was organized by ISEC, the world's leading youth leadership development organization, developing the potential of young people across 126 countries and territories, including Switzerland. The event was attended by several embassies like the United States of America, Saudi Arabia, Romania, Guatemala, Sri Lanka, among others. Diaspora TV Switzerland spoke to Tuvaraja Tilayam Palam, the band committee president of ISEC, on the aims and objectives of the festival and the organization. What we do is, or what we aim for, is cultural exchange that we do as ISEC, the student organization which is based uh, on an international level. We do that in, in cooperation with the embassies from Bern. And we offer food and cultural information, country information, everything, and also our product of global volunteering, where we organize a volunteering abroad for 6 to 12 weeks. Stay up to date with us for more news and information. Here for Diaspora TV, Maria Heise. Have a good day.